placing this um, follow-up on YouTube. This is in regards to Pulaski Animal Hospital. We've been going there for um, my pets and I. Well, one is now deceased. I had to put her down. The other one has renal failure. She, they're both, they were both patients over at Pulaski Animal Hospital. In the very beginning when I brought them there, uh, especially with Misha, Pulaski Animal Hospital was an outstanding, not even a hospital actually, it's a clinic, but they were outstanding. Uh, Dr. Digas, when he was there, he was an exceptional doctor. Uh, Dr. Collada was an intern at the time. He was a great guy. So was so was Dr. Christie. She was an intern at the time and when they were treating Misha, she had a real bad uh, rash that affected her uh, her breathing. And uh, everything was fine up until about 2016 or so. I started having problems with uh, the office manager. And from that point on, it, everything went downhill. No, now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with the doctors that you know have treated my girls since that time. Dr. Spinder was is exceptional. Dr. Collada now was uh, both my girls' primary doctor. But it's the problem lies with the office manager and some of the staff who may no longer be there, or may still be there, but as of the, let me see, the date, uh, as of the 19th uh, of June, which was this past Monday, I was informed that um, the girl, uh, Misha now, she's my only one left, they will no longer treat her. They don't want to see her. She has renal failure. So, knowing that, she's a senior. This is how they treat their you know, long, long years of you know devotion to their establishment. That's how they treat their clients. Once they, it appears once they get old and there's problems, they dump them. But I think the true reason is because of a situation that occurred uh, that Friday prior, which would have been uh, the 16th of June. Let me tell you something about the office manager. The, she, for whatever reason, doesn't like being annoyed being bothered with questions and as a pet parent you want to do, have the best for your, your pet you want to make sure that they're treated with the highest priority and up until 2016 my girls were now I've seen a lot of good reviews and don't get me wrong most of the reviews are pretty accurate if they're great doctors but I came across quite a few negative ones that reiterate what I've been saying all along. That the staff, there are staff members there that are rude. And the uh, office manager is just as rude. The reviews even point out the office manager is rude. So, I saved those negative reviews so you can make comparison which I'm about to share with you of my interactions with Pulaski Animal Hospital. I keep a uh, video journal of all my um, encounters with the staff, um, receptionists, and including number one Cheryl Drasky. Now, the most recent one, and I'm, I'm just going to just say this very, um, very quickly. This is just 
the intro to a list of my documented uh, conversations with Plasky Animal Hostels, which I'm going to post on YouTube as well. So you can go through the list. There's quite a few calls, quite a few, that you'll see in here where I'm uh, put on hold. I am uh, told that I'm rude when it's not that I'm rude. It's just that when you're told numerous times you're going to get a call back, you never do, people are going to get upset. And that's what I did. I never raised my, you know, I, I didn't swear, didn't do any of that. But you have to understand, I suffer from mental health issues, okay? My pets are my emotional support. Hippie with my emotional support. But after what Cheryl Drasky did with my pets when I needed advice, she totally ignored my request for help. She saw the videos of what I submitted where my girls were in extreme pain. They're both, they both were diagnosed with um, terminal illnesses. Misha has, uh, well at the time, stage two uh, renal failure. As of the 16th of, um, I'm sorry, as of uh, the 19th of this month, when they told me that they would no longer see her, I had called originally to let them know that there was something wrong with her breathing. I was concerned that maybe where she's at now, which is a stage two renal failure, may have gotten worse, so I requested a blood test. They didn't do it. They wouldn't honor that. I asked for a, an evaluation of the quality of her life because I'm giving uh, subcutaneous uh, treatments, which is fluids under the fur, to flush her uh, kidneys up because she can't um, release the toxins from her kidneys on her own. They wouldn't give me that. So when they dumped us, and that's exactly what they did, they dumped us. And so did Dr. Spender, which I'm very, very disappointed, very shocked that he would do so. We ended up having, I had to find someplace else because as time went on, her health is you know, deteriorating. So I ended up finding a, a doctor that was willing to do a blood test to see where her kidneys are now. That was on the 21st that I was able to get her in. I found out she's now at stage three renal failure. Um, they're telling me the, you know, the quality of life for Misha at this point. It's up to, it's up to me to decide. I asked them how does it look? I won't, I won't mention the name of the, the hospital that I took them to, but they said I probably have maybe, maybe uh, three months with her. That's it. If not sooner, that she'll leave me. So I'm able to compose myself right now because I no longer have any tears to shed. I've cried so much. But I will show you all the videos and you can listen to yourself on these conversations. It's not a question of anybody being rude or ignorant. I, or maybe so, maybe so, I don't know. I can only speak for myself. Knowing myself, I don't swear at anybody unless I'm really, 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 really ticked off. And I've never showed any disrespect towards anybody at Pulaski Animal Hospital. I've always, and if you listen to uh, my recordings of my, uh, these are all visual documentate, um, journal documentations that I've done. You'll hear the way I talk to them is the way I've always talked to them. Never swore. You'll 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 notice that. The only time I did raise my voice was when I was told, and Misha 
I believe he had a seizure on the uh, 16th of this month. I was informed after I told him what I saw with my girl Misha. The girl I spoke with, uh, I find out, found out. Uh, well, the first one I spoke with, uh, I didn't get her name. Uh, the second one was Melina. I was desperate. I was crying because I thought Misha was dying. So I guess she sensed the emotions in my voice and she said, listen, let me go talk to the doctor. So I think, you know, Dr. I don't know if Dr. Spender was there, but she came back and said, uh, she told the doctors that were in the back room and she asked me, how soon can I get Misha there? And I told her, well, let me get a ride. Let me clean her up because uh, at that point, I thought she was dead, to be honest with you. She was laying uh, in her, her own bodily fluids. She was choking on her vomit, which she was gagging, looking, giving the impression she was giving her last final breaths with a death stare, literally a death stare. That's what it looked like. She had urine and vomit on both sides of her torso so that tells me she was flipping around to do that I would assume that she had a seizure I told them that so when they told me to bring her in I followed their instructions what this Melina told me and when I get there what did they tell me nope can't see her nobody here to see her I said I was told by, well, I, I, at the time I didn't know, I couldn't remember the name of the girl until I called that Monday and she happened to pick up and I recognized the voice and she confirmed that it was her that I spoke with and that, um, you know, she did speak with the doctor. So I asked her, which doctors did you talk to? Because they turned me away with a dying, well, I, at the time I thought she was dying. Uh, she is not doing well right now. And uh, she said, there were three doctors in the back room. One of them happened to be her primary doctor, Dr. Collado. They all agreed that, yes, bring her in. They'll be waiting for her. And um, in my uh, last uh, documented uh, conversation I had with her on Monday, that's what she reiterated to me. That's what she stated. And I said, who else was there? She only mentioned Dr. Cloud. She didn't give me the other two doctors' names, but she did mention that Cheryl was in the room. Now, once um, you listen to the documented journal, video journals, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about with the problem with the office manager. And then I will show you all the other Google and Yelp results that respond to how the staff treats their customers and also how the office manager treats their customers they're all rude they say which I can I, I can contest to, or attest to that not all their staff members are like that some are but definitely the office manager so I took Misha when I put I had put Hippie down on the 21st of April at Plasky Animal Hospital. The day after that, Misha was urinating blood and had a discharge. I took Misha in that Saturday, spoke with the owner, Dr. Spinder, and explained to him when we were in the room, which by the way, they placed me in the same room that we put Hippie down in. So that was a traumatic experience for me because it was like reliving the day before all over again. That's all I saw was just Hippie. I explained to him what the problem I was having for years now, I'm sure you're probably saying, well, if you got these, if you had these problems for years, why didn't you leave? You know, you could have gone, find, found some other place. Yeah, I could have. But the problem wasn't with the quality 
of doctor's care that I received there. They got my girls got the best care, especially with Dr. Digas. Dr. Clotta is fantastic. Dr. Spender is fantastic. It's how you're treated by the staff, certain staff members, and most of all, the office manager. My girl suffered for four days when I submitted the videotape of what I was concerned about with their health. At that time, they were both terminally ill. That Monday that I submitted the video, their primary doctor wasn't there. So I asked the girl that I called when I called the hospital to inform them that I had sent them a video of what I witnessed that early earlier that morning. And I said, could you have Cheryl look at these videos? Tell me what she thinks. Is this something I should be preparing for? Is this the final stage for hippie? Because that's what this was, you know, at that time was more for hippie. I didn't realize what was going on with Misha. But it was hippie that was going quick. She saw the videos. But she didn't act on it. She never called me to give me some sort of, you know, advice of what to do because her primary doctor wasn't there that day on Monday. Normally, I guess he was because I heard, I know that Thursdays he was he doesn't work. So I, I was under the assumption he would be there that day, but he wasn't. So I asked for Cheryl. She looked at the videos, but did nothing else. I would call. Um, numerous times I called numerous times that day to speak with her and either my calls would go to their voicemail or I would they would pick up and I would you know be put on hold be, after I had requested Cheryl just to have the receptionist come back on the line and say well Cheryl's busy right now she'll call you back and then the call never comes but see that's a common common response I would get Cheryl will call you back. Cheryl will call you back. Cheryl will call you back. That's all I've heard for Cheryl for years. And she never calls back. So after even, I even asked, did she even bother? Did she even see the videos? And this Maria, you know, Maria says, yeah, she's a, a, I don't know, a receptionist or I don't know if she's a technician or what, what her position is there. But she confirmed because she asked Cheryl, "Did you, you know, David Ortiz wants to know if you saw the videos?" Cheryl, you know, relayed, "Tell him I saw the videos. I'll call him in three minutes." Never came. Call never came. So that Saturday, when I took Misha in for what was going on with her, I spoke with the owner. He was there that day, and I told him that either he has a talk with her or he does something because. I know he sees all these reviews, but what I also notice is he doesn't respond to the negative reviews. He only responds to the four-star reviews or you know, how many five-star reviews, whatever they got. When they got, and I happened to come across my review back from 2011 when they were working on Misha, and you know now I'm giving a warning to anybody wants to take their pets because after you listen to my video journals and especially with what Cheryl's done concerning my pets you will want to rethink ever giving them your business now I'm not saying that they're bad there's good doctors it's the management so that day Dr. Spender is treating Misha that Saturday and I told him about the videos that I sent. He says, well, I'd like to see the videos. I said, well, I sent them to your mobile number in the office. So he, we, you know, we walked uh, into the little hallway in the back. And uh, he, I don't know if he didn't know, you know, he was looking, couldn't find them. So Yesenia, I told Yesenia, I sent the videos. Can you find them for Dr. Spender? She looked for the videos. And she comes, she comes back and says, I can't find them. Um, Paris, somebody's deleted them. Deleted them. 
didn't give them to any of the doctors. Dr. Clotted had no idea about the videos. Uh, Dr. Spencer apparently didn't see the videos. The only person who saw the video was Cheryl. So, if they were deleted, the only person who could have possibly deleted them was Cheryl. And why she didn't tell anybody about it, I have no idea. Other than, she doesn't like when people call and ask so many questions concerning the care for their pets, or the care of their pets. Because that's what I did. I had called numerous times because I'm a concerned pet parent. I worry about their health. And because I'm disabled, I have no transportation to get there. I don't have the luxury of when they're sick to either, you know, if I'm able to get a, uh, an appointment right away, I can't get there because I got no, no car. So, I have to call. I'll give them my, the symptoms that I'm calling on. And I depend on their advice. What you see, is it something I should bring them in on? Or do you advise me to try something at home first? Or is it just something that you know should you know just go away on its own? She deleted the videos. So, I couldn't show the doctor what was on there. But I do have it on my phone because I submitted the videos through my phone. So even though they deleted the videos, I still had the videos that I sent on that Monday on my phone in the in my text message portion of the phone. Didn't think about it at the time to show Dr. Spender, but you know, it doesn't matter now. So my pet because I was, they claim I was rude on the 16th of June, which was a Friday, that I was told to come in because doctors were waiting. And then I was told no. So when I spoke with Melina on Monday, I said, who canceled the, uh, you know, the, you know, the doctors looking at my girl, Misha? She had no idea. She said, all I know is Dr. Spender was in the uh, room, Cheryl was in the, in the room, and two other doctors. I, ca I can't figure out who the other two other doctors is, unless it was Dr. Spender and Dr. Christie. But Dr. Spender says he wasn't there. So, either, well, somebody's not telling me the truth. But, I'm telling you right now, you are a welcome client, a welcome patient. They're willing to work on your pet, probably as long as they're young and healthy, and there's minimal risk of, you know, uh, uh, complications if it's something basic and, you know, general that you're bringing your pet in for, such as vaccinations or teeth cleaning or like minor surgery. But the minute you start having, you know, maybe older pets coming in, then, you know, it, things tend to change a little. Because that's the only thing I can think of. Because they claim they're not, uh, you know, they're not punishing Misha for canceling her. They're, they're punishing me because I speak up. They say I'm rude. I wasn't rude. I did what any other person would have done if they were told, bring your pet in, because you're following their instructions. And that's what I did. And when I get there, if you're told, no, no, sorry, no one's going to see him. Well, yeah, then uh, I'm going to blow a gasket, because I'm only following your instructions. And Dr. Spender... It's great that you respond to all the positive uh, you know, reviews. Why don't you respond to the negative ones? Hmm? No answer, do you? Okay. So, in the text message from that Saturday when Dr. Spender saw Misha, he kept in contact with me. He t even texted me. 
If you have any questions, call me anytime. I have that text message on my phone, and I'm going to post that with the rest of my uh, video journal and all the negative reviews that are you know reiterating everything that I'm saying. It's the rudeness of the staff or certain staff members, the rudeness of the office manager. And, you know, it's, that's what it is. But when, the, you know, you, when you speak up against the rudeness from these individuals, you're the bad guy. The problem still continues. There's no, there's no, it doesn't seem like there was any disciplinary action taken. Dr. Spender apparently would rather deal and keep his rude employees than to address the concerns of the client and their patient. God forbid, you know, you take so much from them. It's like there's only so many times you can hit a dog before that dog snaps and bites you. And that's exactly what I'm sure a lot of these, you know, individuals who put bad reviews in for them, because I'm sure it's not that they put the bad reviews on the first bad, um, you know, case that they had with them, or the first bad, um, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for, situation that they had with them. I'm sure it took, it all, it all boiled over for quite some time before they spoke negatively on to whoever. And the minute they did that, they're marked as being rude. And then they're told, don't call us, don't bring your pet, find someplace else. But yet, it's okay for the staff and the office manager to be rude to the, to the client. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm picking up. Misha's now at stage three. They're telling me I only had maybe a few months with her left. And Plasky Animal Hospital just brushed her off to the side. That's all they did. Because I stood up for them. I wanted to know why I was told to bring them in. I wish I, you know, I kind of resent that I didn't at least video what I walked into that Friday after I walked out of the, uh, my apartment for just 15 seconds. I said goodbye to Misha because I had to go do something. I told her I'd be right back. She wasn't feeling good. I could tell she was bloated, which was unusual. 15 seconds, that's all it took from me leaving her laying on the bed. I walked out into my foyer realizing I forgot my mask. I walked back in and here's Misha laying on the floor covered in her bodily fluid. She lost control of her bladder. She was covered on both sides of her torso with her waist and vomit and she was choking. I had to lift her and try to clear her, clear her head, her mouth because I could see it just coming out of her mouth and she was like choking with a death stare just staring straight ahead not able to even get up she was just laying there and I could just watch her, her I could barely see her chest rising I was told when that happens when you see bodily fluid like that that means they're going they're going and that's what I thought I was I walked in on watching my girl die in front of me I've already lost one and I was gonna lose another one I thought now these spasms that uh, I originally witnessed when Hippie was still around with Misha that morning, I'm thinking that has something to do with her kidneys. But I was told uh, by Dr. Spender um, it might be neurological. Well, okay, it's neurological. What are we going to do about it? Right? He, n nothing else was said neurological I was waiting for him to say well what do you know what can we do I mean I w at that point I would have done anything but I'm thinking these these buckings and I'm gonna post that again I because I, I have the video I saved them 
and then you can tell whether what you what you're witnessing is something that would be normal for a sleeping dog because um, I had one of the staff um, one of the staff uh, members uh, mentioned that well because I described what I saw and she, she said oh well you know dogs do that when they're dreaming I said no this wasn't no dream because I know what they do when they're you know, when they're dreaming but, you know the you can see the the paws are moving in a certain manner and you hear little, <laughs> you know <laughs> crying like that like they're chasing or something this was something far worse than that this was like a, a harsh bucking from the hips like there was I, I can't even describe it I'll sh I'll show it but you're gonna see dr. Spender what your office manager deleted and failed to bring to the attention of either a doctor let alone you why did she delete him it wasn't dr. Collada and I know it wasn't you because you were looking for him Yesenia was looking for him and she said I know they were here I don't know who deleted them so she asked me can you resend them well at the time I didn't realize that I didn't think that I had them on my phone it didn't come to mind because I had my phone with me had I remembered I would have showed him uh, Dr. Uh, Spinder the videos off my phone didn't think of it at the time so now I'm left counting the days that I have left with Misha and Dr. Spinder says we don't want to see your dog I rather believe my staff that you were rude if you play your security camera Dr. Spinder that uh, that's in your waiting room you could see now whether or not you have audio if you have audio then you know that tell, that'll tell you everything because you got the visual and the audio you can hear for yourself and see what my body language was at the time whether or not I was rude no I wasn't rude I did what any other person would have done if they were told to bring their pets in and then told no you can't bring them in you got to go because there's no one here so this is what I think happened since Dr. Collada and I'm, I'm a little dis, you know disappointed because Dr. Collada that Friday in the lobby came out he saw me kind of gave me a look uh, and turned around and walked back into the back room but according to Melina and I have her uh, I have in my journal my vi uh, uh, video journal her stating yeah dr. Collada was in the room with two whoever these other two other doctors were and I can only guess that it was dr. Spender and dr. Uh, Christie because that's the only doctors that I know of that are still there and Cheryl and if it wasn't dr. S Spender then whoever else was there I'm sure it wasn't that Cheryl was on board with bringing Misha in. Cheryl probably said, don't bother Dr. Spender. Just tell him he can't, there's no one here to see him. Just treat Misha. That's what Cheryl said. So again, yeah, I did call Cheryl worthless in the hallway because I know what she did to my, uh, to my hippie she made my girl suffer for four days and it's not a luxury of me getting up and finding someone else to take it to her why should I because you've been her doctor all these years you know her better than anyone else why would I want to take my girls or hippie to someone who has no idea what her medical history is knows nothing about my dog no it's not a question of the quality of doctor care that my girls received it's the way the office management treats their customers and the lack of returning calls and responding to emergency requests or advice in a timely manner I didn't even I didn't even get a sympathy card for hippie but yet I paid 
Pulaski Animal Hospital to euthanize, euth, euth, euthanize her. I paid the fee. I have a hard time pronouncing that word. Euth, euthanization or something or just like that. So, yeah. And I'm coming after Cheryl with a civil suit. And I'm afraid I'm going to have to come after Pulaski Animal Hospital for negligence because you allowed your staff member to totally ignore this emergency by deleting this information and not reporting it or, re or handing it over to her primary doctor who could have at least told me, you know, and that's all I wanted to know. It's the time for me to say goodbye to her because she, she suffered. And as many times as I tried calling throughout from Monday all the way up until Thursday, didn't get any response. I did my best to care for her. The, the pain medication, that was another thing. Maybe what they had uh, prescribed for her wasn't strong enough. Maybe I had to up the dosage. That would have been nice if I to be told maybe just up her dosage. But no. No one told me because nobody called me back. You know, maybe they need, someone needs to uh, be able to sh tell them there's a way to differentiate yelling and someone who's anxious. See, I don't know if the, apparently the staff and, and Cheryl isn't aware that I suffer from severe anxiety, severe depression, suicidal, and I'm bipolar. So, Maybe you should be able to read or understand where people are at in their lives and what type of problems they have and adjust to that and know how to communicate with people with mental health disorders. Don't quickly mark them off as being rude. Unless, of course, they're swearing at them, at the staff, or they walk in and start throwing things around and acting like a complete idiot which I didn't do but you'll know you'll, you'll you'll see that because every every video that I have if you listen to the way I talk that's how I've always addressed the staff members there so sit back take a look at the videos and you decide whether this is where you want to bring your pets because eventually when your pets get old and or if you ask too many god forbid you ask too many questions because you're concerned about your pet cheryl may get annoyed and treat you the way she treated me all these years i'm not the patient so if you don't like me that's too bad i'm not here to be treated for any medical condition you're in the you're in the business of taking care of animals taking care of pets. That's what my, my girls are. They're my family members. They're my emotional support. You threaten their health in any way and I'll see you in litigation. And I'll make sure you'll never forget what you did. I only got to less than three months maybe with Misha. Now she's stage three. And all I wanted, a simple thing, Give me a blood test on her. Let me know where she's at with her renal failure. Tell me, should I continue these these subcutaneous treatments? Is it worth it? Because I don't know if it's the quality of life for her now after the treatments are even worth it. And on top of that, on top of that, she still needs her medication. Now get this. And that's, and that's another thing. A couple of these negative, a couple of the negative reviews were saying all they're concerned about is the money. Well, after the response I got from from uh, the young lady that I spoke with, coming from Doctor Spender, I'm sure that's who he spoke with, or maybe it was Cheryl herself. Who knows? I asked, well, since you're not going to, you know, treat her any longer, you're not going to tell me where she's at with her her, her, her renal failure. Will you? Can I still purchase her medications? And I just said just to see what she'd say. They'd say, 
Because in my mind, I'm already, I'm already thinking, if her, if the way she is now, is because she's her kidneys have gotten worse. Are you going to sell me medication that if her kidneys have gotten worse, that prescription may be potentially doing more harm than good? Because if their kidneys have gotten worse, which they have, then Doctor Spencer was really good about it. Because Doctor, uh, I was, she was uh, Misha was taking carprofen for the, her pain, but Doctor Spencer realized, well, her kidneys are very gentle, very delicate. So it has to be uh, the medication, the painkiller has to be a more of a mild type of medication, because anything harsher than that will cause more damage to her kidneys. So I asked her, "Can I still get the medication?" She goes, I'll be right back. Let me ask. They come back, or she comes back and says, yeah, we'll sell you medications. We just won't give you, you know, we won't do the blood test. We won't treat or anything. They'll take the money for the medication, but they won't, they won't check to see how their patient's kidneys are doing. That's Pulaski Animal Hospital. Now I see the true face. A Pulaski Animal Hospital. And if this was Dr. Spender's decision of, to continue selling me a med, uh, the medication, well, this goes to show you where his his mind is at. Money talks. That's all it is. Money. So, I'll be submitting this, and um, I wouldn't be surprised if there's going to be some, a lot of angry people reading this and viewing this video and reading all the documented calls I've made through the years with Pulaski Animal Hospital most recently most importantly <coughs> um, but yeah hmm. Cheryl Drasky good luck future uh, pet parents if you decide to go to Pulaski Animal Hospital because you're, you'll be welcomed in the beginning but mind you, if you ask too many questions because you're, con you're concerned about your pet, you would be probably marked as being an annoyed, an annoying person because you ask too many questions. And they don't want to hear that. They just want your money. Yeah. Okay. Time to get to work. We offer spaying and neutering services okay, to prevent unloved Today's litters of pets. <coughs> December 8th, 2021. It can also improve your pet's health and life expectancy and eliminate the possibility of uterine, ovarian, and prostate cancer. We will be happy to answer any questions and she was trying to force herself to go, <coughs> there was a lot of blood coming out of her anal passage. So it's got me real concerned. I, I called Animal Hospital at 1224 p.m. Uh, by the time I got off the phone with them and asked for Cheryl to call me, it was 1250 p.m. It is now 353. So it's over three hours that I've been waiting for a call back from Cheryl. Uh, I need to ask her questions about what I can do to expedite the uh, you know, her, uh, passing whatever is blocking her. Um, how do I go about, is it possible to give a dog an animal, first of all, because I'm willing to do it. Uh, I'm really worried about this book because it wasn't just a little. As she was pushing, it was like, like squirting, literally squirting out. So, can I give a dog an animal? That's what I want to find out. I'm waiting. I just called a second, uh, this will be my third time calling. My anxieties are like this. See, if I was able to continue my life normally the way I used to prior to Father's Day of this year, I don't think I'd be in this situation. This, my, my, the way I am now, my health, all reflects from what happened to me on Father's Day. I'm 100% sure of it. 
doesn't have the vim and vigor of their youth. The minute I'm that woman could, much faster next door, as she was on the phone with the dispatcher, said he had a sword and a knife. I was holding the phone a lot, you know, videotaping her, and I'm repeating myself, I know I am. The minute she said that, I could feel the anxiety just and you could see it. You could physically see it. And me holding the camera, you can see the hand camera start to shake. And the minute she says knife in his backpack or whatever, it's, it was uncontrollable. And that feeling, that feeling, at that moment, what was going through me? It was like a, like an unsettling feeling, like doom, death. And since then, even right after that, the feeling stayed with me. And it still, to this day, stays with me. Every time I see them, all I see is what happened on Father's Day. I can't focus. For when I got it. We also post special holiday hours we may have. I don't know. And welcome photos of your pet. But like this is what I gotta use, this is what I gotta use. You know. I've never done this before. Please hurry. Come on. Alright, so in six minutes, ten seconds, I don't know. We'd like to remind our valued clients to please be kind to our staff. They're working extremely hard to provide the best care for your pets and give them the attention they deserve. This past year, the to. number of pets nationwide has increased dramatically. While animal hospitals experience staffing shortages and struggle to accommodate the rapidly growing demand, for their services. This has resulted in longer wait times due to the influx of appointments, but we can assure you that each appointment is dedicated to giving your pets the time they need for quality care. Thank you again for your kindness and understanding. A team member will be with you as soon as possible. <laughs> We apologize 
apologize for any long wait times you may experience as we're working to make sure we provide care for your pet in an ongoing safe manner. During this time, our doctors and our phone lines have been exceptionally busy. Please understand that wait times may be significantly longer than normal, and you may have to call multiple times before reaching a team member. Can you roll the... Uh, hi, Cheryl. Cheryl? No, I'll transfer you over, okay? All right, thank you. No, I'll transfer you over. All right, thank you. No one wants rodents in their home, but please avoid using poisonous rodenticide baits or tracking powders, as they are poisonous to your pet. Many rodenticides are tasteless, odorless, and have symptoms which may not be immediately apparent. Rat poisoning symptoms include muscle tremors, seizures, and impaired movement. Watch puppies and kittens especially if they put everything in their mouth. Call us right away if your pet has ingested rodenticide. Did you know that antifreeze tastes sweet? You wouldn't want to taste it and find out, but your pet might, as its sweet taste is appealing to them. Don't let your pet go near this poisonous chemical as it can be deadly if treatment isn't quickly administered. Be sure to clean all spills and store ant out of reach. If your pet has to dance, you have reached the desk of Cheryl Muse. I am either sure. on the phone or away from my desk. Please leave a detailed <laughs> message and I will bring your call as soon as possible. Cheryl, this is David um, Ortiz. I called at 1250 to speak with you. It's already three hours that I've been waiting. I need to ask you a question concerning a uh, situation with Hippie. Uh, I don't want to bother the veterinarian, so I figured I'd, I'd speak with you since you have you know, 40 years experience as you claim. Uh, I'd like to ask you a question before you leave. Uh, number is 708-308-6331. Thank you. All right, all right. Why? It's always hard. It's always a problem to get a hold of her. This will be. There's been two times that I remember that I called to ask specifically for Cheryl. The one time I waited six working days to get a response. Uh, the second time it was pretty close to that. My dog's constipated she's got blood coming out of her anus okay
Have you thought about what would happen if you could not find your pet? Microchipping is a great easily identify your pet and get them home safe. Pulaski Animal Hospital is qualified to perform the simple task of injecting the tiny chip under your pet's skin at any visit. So quick and easy, why not have your pet microchip today? We are all about peace of mind here at Pulaski Animal Hospital. Animal Hospital, we provide a full range of veterinary care for your pet, from the initial appointment through diagnostics and treatment. Our veterinary hospital has state-of-the-art diagnostic equipment, such as ultrasound and radiography technology, to identify many diseases, cancers, and other problems. If you're waiting for test results, please ask one of our professional staff when we return in a moment. <laughs> the desk of Cheryl Muse. I am either on the phone or away from my desk. Please leave a detailed message and I will return your call as soon as possible. Black Animal Hospital. Uh, hi, uh, this is Dave Ortiz calling. In regards to the hippie, um, is does Doctor Collada leaving the office soon? Um, yes, he is. All right. Is it possible if he before he leaves, if he can call me in regards to the hippie? Because I, you know, I, I tried to get a hold of Cheryl. I don't know what what the problem is. No, 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 no. You know what? I'm tired. You know, I'm tired of waiting for her because this isn't. You know, I've I've had problems. You know, connecting with her in the past, and I, this isn't. This is serious as far as I'm concerned with the blood coming out of her butt. So I need to speak to a doctor. I need to find out how much hippie weighs at, as of my last visit. Is it possible to give a dog an enema? And if so, how much water per, how many millimeters will I need to give her for her weight? That's all I needed to know. You know, I, 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 again, I, I can't wait for Cheryl. I don't want to talk to Cheryl. Thank you. Um, okay, so I'll let him know. Thank you. No problem. Just to let you know, Mr. Ortiz, I'm not guaranteeing your phone call today. All right, so so then what's the problem with Cheryl? I'm saying. What's the problem with Cheryl? She's most probably not. She's probably either on the other line or she's probably talking to my boss. Um, you know, there's there's other things that she has to do. Um, you know, we transfer you over once for, to her voicemail. You could leave her voicemail. I, I did. I did. Okay. So let me see if she's available now. All right. Um, please hold. All right. Thank you. Seasonal changes can affect us in many ways. Arthritis and other painful joint conditions, such as inflammation and swelling, are painful to many of us, including our pets. At Pulaski Animal Hospital, we can recommend therapies to keep your pet comfortable and pain-free during these times. As one of our trained professionals about seasonal changes in your pet when we come back. Can't decide on whether to spay or neuter your pet? Spaying or neutering can prevent unwanted and unloved litters of pets and can also improve your pet's overall temperament, along with preventing mammary tumors in females and behavioral problems in males. At Pulaski Animal Hospital, we recommend spaying or neutering your pet before the age of six months. For more information on the pros and cons of spaying or neutering, or to make an appointment for your pet, please stay on the line. One of our trained professionals will be with you in a moment. <laughs> Cheryl, hi. This is David Ortiz. Um, hi. Cheryl, I, um, what's going all right. On? All right. Um, this morning, I I took the girls out. Hippie <coughs> tried to pass. Uh, you know, she was trying to go to the bathroom number two, and I noticed after four or five minutes she struggled. So I figured, 
get her to walk. It'll work through whatever's blocking. It'll work through its system. So after like 10, 12 minutes of her trying to pass whatever, she couldn't do it. So I started thinking, all right, I'll Google, you know, can I give a dog a laxative? I found an article. I read it. It suggested certain things. But then it said... And as I, as I was reading this, this one part uh, portion of the article, if a dog, if you see blood in a dog's stool or blood coming out of its anal passage area, take the dog immediately to the vet. So I figured, well, it's not like that, I don't think, because at the time I was reading it, she was still trying to go. So I happened to look down at her back end, and here, as she's trying to push it out, I mean, she's got, like, I don't know if it's tears coming from her eyes, but there's blood being Every time she pushed, there was blood being pumped, pushed out of her anal. It was bright red blood, and it wasn't... That's the membrane. That's the membranes. I know what you're referring oh. to. It looks like they're bleeding, um, this... especially when dogs are really straining. You'll see it's like, it is almost like part of the intestine membranes being pushed out. <sighs> okay. Okay, I mean, I've seen it before. I know, what you're, I know exactly what you're referring to. Um, it looks like Oh my God! They're like it's a bright red. But it's not like a little but, trickle. It was it was like like you know when you when you hit an oil vein, it's like a big spurt spurt. That was what was coming. Was it going down to the floor? Ground? Yeah, yeah. It was spurting out. No, nothing. No, no poop was coming out. But as she was pushing, blood was pushing out. That was it. I wonder if she if she uh, broke a uh, if she broke a uh, hemorrhoid or something like that. You know that happens to people too. Yeah. Red? Yes. Yes. That is not a sign of internal problem. That's, okay. That's, that's um, bright red means there's a bleed somewhere around just the anus area. Okay. Could it be where that's? There, I know there's a, like a sac that secretes a certain fluid that helps a dog pass. It kind of smells like fish. Could that be around there? Right. The anal glands. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay, she just got off the uh, last uh, antibiotics that we had for the rash, I, uh, this most recent. Um, she's finished with that, but what about an enema? <laughs> Forgive me. I, I, I'm, I'm... No. So when you, when you start messing around with the digestion tract, when you start messing around with laxatives and enema, sometimes you're making things worse. You're causing more problems. Um, well, I'm just no, referring just with water, no, nothing else, water. No, no, no. no? Okay. Uh, yeah, she did, but you know what? It was just like like two little, the size of um, like a, a nut, like a little nut, a couple, like two or three. Okay. Okay. You, the only thing that I would recommend, I'll tell you to do at home, and I had already talked to Dr. Claude about this, is we do recommend some canned pumpkin. Oh, oh, I gave her some. I just gave her some. Okay. Give her, yeah, you can give her a couple spoonfuls several times a day. And that's additional fiber, and it's also additional moisture. Okay. Would, like, Metamucil help a dog? Can you give, like, Metamucil that you give yes, a... Yes, you can give, you can give Metamucil to them. Okay. Um, Yeah, it just started um, today. Make sure she has plenty of fluid. Okay. Make sure you give her the pumpkin. Okay. Add water to her food, her dinner. Okay. Um, and if, you know, if she doesn't, you know, and see what happens by tomorrow. Okay. 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 Yeah. So, I mean, you know, you, when you start messing around right away with the whole laxative enema thing, then sometimes you're creating more problems. Okay, so the, so the, the water won't soften it to push it out or have it come out. No, I you know I I, I would 
Not too fast. Okay, okay, that's fine. I won't. Okay, that's yeah. so plenty yeah, of fluid. I know you're worried. I oh, know Cheryl, you're I'm freaking worried. out. I'm freaking out. I'm sorry. But I know people who have hemorrhoids. It's the same thing. They start passing fresh blood because they break a vessel when they're straining. Well, I, I, I couldn't speak for that because I've never experienced that, but I take your word for it. <laughs> so, all right, I'm going to try that. I'll try that. All right. All right, thanks, Cheryl. Continue with the pumpkin, add water to the food. Make, you know, make sure she, she gets plenty of water. Okay. How many times should I give her pump, a pumpkin a day? About three times a day. Okay. And uh, two tablespoons, three tablespoons? Two four. tablespoons, two or three tablespoons would be great. Okay. Okay. You know, when you feed her dinner tonight, add some water to it. You know, make it really soupy for her. Gotcha. Okay. The moisture she has is going to soften everything up. Okay? Gotcha. gotcha. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. No problem. All right. Okay. Thank you. Take Bye -bye. care, Cheryl. Thank you. All right. I finally got a hold of Cheryl. Apparently, but I can tell you why she got on the phone. Because that uh, Maria, I'm sure it was Maria, stressed how upset I was. That's the only reason she got on the phone. Plus, with what I wanted to do and wait I think that's when Cheryl said okay I better you know it's not this is not what I expected she probably think I was calling to whatever ask about something whatever okay I'm gonna try that I'm gonna take her out and see if I can get her to work I'm like, can't do this I'm not gonna do this all right come on come on girls I need to take you for a walk let's go for a walk Taking the trazodone, trazodone. <clears throat> Everything seemed to be working for a while, but now, uh, look. Mm -hmm. It looks like I haven't had sleep in a few days. I don't know what it is. I can't sleep. I keep thinking about going outside and talking. She uh, blocked where I normally go to talk to the Lord. And knowing this person, if she sees I'm out there just sitting there talking, or she doesn't know what I'm doing, but I, I'm talking to upstairs, she's going to call the cops. That's, wait, that's her character. She'll call the police. First thing, call the police and see there's whatever she's going to lie about it because that's all she does is fabricate lies to get a quick police response but she doesn't realize her actions can be extremely dangerous so I can't do it because if I do at 2 or 3 or whatever time I have to be out there or wish to be out there at that time in the morning cops are, are going to think who kind of nut sits out there at that time it can get ugly real quick especially with all the police shootings She's interfering with me worshiping, speaking to God. I regret ever helping that woman. I regret stopping 
and offering her food. Even though I should not feel that way, I see what kind of people they are. Because she, they both are made from the same mold. They don't know how to value a good friendship. It's about, all it is about them, what they can get to go their way, no matter what they have to do. If it means lying or causing problems, but then they play the victim card, like, oh, poor me, poor me. Oh, I'm handicapped. Oh. But what they won't tell responding officers or anyone who's in, in, you know, you know, responding to that is that they're the one that instigates it. <sighs> okay, I gotta get these girls. I gotta get her out to go to the bathroom. I gotta address them, so I'm, I'm ending this video. Um, there's a lot going through my mind lately. And I, Maybe tonight, later tonight, I'll let you, I'll feed you what's been going on with me. So, bye. We're on hold with uh, the animal hospital. They told me to call the back. Um, they have it. They said they had an 11:35 or 11:40 opening for Monday, so I can bring her mission to. Uh, be shown how to administer these fluids because her kidneys are failing. Um, I had a call right back to make sure I can secure a ride to take her there. It was like maybe a three minutes gap from when I hung up with them and then uh, secured a ride and I'm calling back. Now they're telling me that it's not available. So I got to speak to the person I originally spoke with. Uh, the girl who picked up the second time didn't know anything about it. So I'm on hold. I'll address that later too.
calling Pulaski Animal Hospital. We're located at 5424 South Pulaski Road in Chicago. Four blocks south of Archer Avenue on Pulaski. One and a half miles south of Interstate 55. Visit www.pulaskianimalhospital.com for directions. Our hours are Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And Saturday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. We are closed on Sunday and all major holidays. Appointments are required for all services, and walk-ins are accommodated only if there are cancellations. For established patients, we offer drop-off appointments where your pet will be examined when time permits, and we'll call you to arrange a discharge time. Thank you for holding. We'll return in just a moment. So it took me seven minutes from the first time I called to the second time I called. Seven minutes had elapsed. The first call in Pulaski Animal Hospital at 10.07, and when I called the second time, it was 10.15, so seven minutes Speak with um, the original girl I spoke with earlier, um, for Misha. Oh, okay. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. She, um, I'm able to it, um, to bring her in at 11:45 Monday. I was ha had a make sure I had a okay. ride. Are you Maria or um? I'm sorry. No, I, I'm Yesenia. Oh, Yesenia. Yesenia. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, and how much? Now, how much could you send me um, um, the the price listing if I get uh, with my to my address so I know how much um, I'll have to be spending weekly? This will be something weekly. Well, yeah, I guess I'm, I'm thinking this is going to be something I'll have to do the rest of her days, right? Yeah. What's your email? Power zero nine eleven at AOL. Yes. All right, thank you, Yesenia. I appreciate it. You're God bless welcome. you. We'll thank see you. Monday. All right, bye bye. Bye. Okay. Okay. So the don't get me wrong. Pulaski Animal Hospital is a great hospital, though there are issues with the um, you know. communications uh, between staff, uh, staff management, and, you know, patients and clients. Um, and I don't, I don't like, you know, I, I, I don't bad, I try not to, you know, speak negatively about people, but there, you know, there's been certain circumstances that have arose at certain times, and, you know, um, This is not the time to talk about it. I got my, uh, again, just to reiterate why I do these videotapings of myself talking to myself is so that I can document my life with, with myself. And if I, you know, if I need to share it, share my experiences. This is more of a journal for myself. I, I, I don't believe in writing anything down in a journal because I just don't have the patience to do that. Misha and Hippie are um, everything. They're my world.
issues. I guess I could, you know, people can, you know, I shouldn't say you know all the time. <sighs> when I get anxious, people may interpret it as getting angry, but it's it's not. If it, when I get angry, if I get angry, I'm going to lash out at you and, and, and to put you in your place in no uncertain terms or uh, kindness. If I'm not swearing at you, then I'm not yelling at you. But... If I have to explain myself, it's for a reason. Because either I was told something prior to me speaking to the, that individual or individuals, and then it is contradicted. Yeah, then I have to reiterate what was stated. And uh, there are times, you know, I just don't like um, being hung up on. Because I can understand that they're busy, but you know, but that's you know, there's that's something else with uh, it's not usually the staff that does that, it's the management in charge. And uh, I'm not gonna mention that person's name right now, but I mean, we I think we we understand each other At, after uh, the last conversation I had with her oh, <laughs> with this person. Wednesday, it was Wednesday, I believe I, I spoke with her. So, this is where I'm at with, with my beloved Misha. I have to, um, I don't know if it's like a form of dialysis, but she's only running on 25% of her kidneys functioning. That's not good. I can't get her to go to the bathroom when I when I believe she needs to go. Now I'm noticing that even her most favorite food she will eat, and that's not like her. So yeah, you know, if it, you know if it's just me here, I could care less. To God, when He brought Hippie and Misha into my life to save me from myself. Yeah, I'm not ashamed to say it. You know, I tried taking my life numerous times. Didn't, didn't work. And I think uh, God brought her into my life to uh, take my mind off of that. Gets it here. You take care of them. Focus on them. Allow them to bring you the happiness and joy that you need in your life. And that's, that's what I've done. I've had these girls, especially Misha. Misha at uh, just over a week old. Hippie I got at uh, five weeks, six weeks. But since then, every waking moment of my days we've been together for the exception of me going to church on Sunday uh, going grocery shopping for them um, and doctor's appointments but it's I come home right right after you know I uh, don't say you know happy though because um, I had requested Dr. Collada to call me yesterday concerning bringing Misha in and uh, her taking uh, anti antibiotics amoxicillin for her urinary tract infection but my question was going to be to him even with the condition of her kidneys 
would those would the antibiotics be doing more harm than good for her since they're only working at 25 percent and uh, I had an appointment at uh, 140 with my uh, therapist via uh, internet tele telecommunication or I don't know how you want to call it but you know I was talking to my therapist via the, via the inter internet and my uh, and the doctor called while I was doing that he left a message uh, I didn't I, I didn't speak with him at that time and he said he would call me back before he leaves now normally he leaves before five o'clock and the times that I'd tried reaching out to him and I've always been, every time I needed to ask a question I always made made it clear that I don't want to interrupt him or ask him anything while he's working or he may be with a patient or he might have a next patient I, you know I, I don't want to have anybody else wait for treatment for their beloved pets because if I'm sure people who bring their pets into the hospital love their pets as much as I love my girls so I always tell the girls at the desk please just before he leaves at the end of the day to call me well there's been numerous times that hasn't happened uh, and uh, you know the, the most the most prominent issues would be receiving test results uh, they, you know they tell you to call Monday or whatever day and when I do it's just a simple tell me what the results are and it won't be for at least four days before I get the results or maybe even at more than a week and that's happened. Uh, matter of fact, that's happened twice. And um, God forbid, it was if it's something serious. And I can't. I don't know what the results are, or that cuts down on the response time, or how we, we should, you know, treat it immediately, whatever the problem is, because of not communicating the results in a timely manner time is is of the essence especially when it comes to medical help regardless if it's a human or an animal and uh, you know this is this is my life it's getting better but uh talking almost 15 years my beloved girls being with me and see this is the problem we as humans when we can communicate with other beings of our species we're able to do so for the most part we, we know how to communicate by speaking with, the, with each other unless we speak a totally different language but there's, there's ways around that. Uh, you translators, or you know, if you're lucky enough, they may not speak English, or you may not speak their language. But they, you know, they may be able to read English. You don't know. With animals, it's a different story. Animals cannot speak the way we do, so we can't communicate in that manner. But if you are capable of interpreting facial expressions and yes I've read articles that animals do communicate with you by their facial reactions and you're able you're, you're um, uh, uh, oh what's what I'm looking for you're able to do so but other than that you unless you can tell that there's something terribly wrong, that's the only way you'll know they may be sick or in pain. So, you know, it's they can't tell you what, what they're feeling all the time, and it's a shatter miss. And uh, right now, by, by looking at Misha, I know that there's something not right with her. So, I gotta I gotta do what I have to do speak up for them. I am their voice. Oh, now that, now 
what's going to bother me because I can't remember the expression I wanted to use. And it, it's stuck in my head now. It's driving me nuts. So, yeah. Right now, my concerns are for Misha and as well as Hippie, but right now Misha needs the attention a little more. That's all I'm going to say for now. Alright, I'm going to cut this and uh, we'll see what my next.